Welcome to the Susan Brender Show. It's all about you. Featuring shows on health and wellness, the performing arts, politics, and people who inspire you to be your very best. And now, here's Susan Brender. I'm Susan Brender, and this is the Susan Brender Show. Today I have the great honor of interviewing a very special woman named Dr. Susan Smith-Jones. You know, for a woman with three of America's most ordinary names, Dr. Susan Smith-Jones has certainly made extraordinary contributions in the fields of holistic medicine, anti-aging, optimum nutrition, and balanced living. Now, let's bring her on the show quickly so she has a lot of things to, to say to you and inform you of. So I want to welcome to my show Dr. Susan Smith-Jones. Hi, Susan. It's wonderful to be with you. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. It's really, truly my pleasure. You know, it's an interesting thing. For starters, you taught faculty at UCLA how to be healthy and fit for 30 years. Yeah, I did. But it's just amazing how quickly time goes by. And, and you know, in those 30 years and since I was there, you know, you still you learn so much from life and the importance of being healthy. And I think these days that more and more people are realizing that if they're under constant stress in their life, that stress can wreak havoc on every area of your body. Mm. You know, Susan, how could we ignore the fact that there are so many things happening in our in our society now? Um, look at look at the situation that we just had: 129 people killed in Paris. How can people? I mean, that's just one example of the kinds of things that are happening in our world, which cause stress. So, how do you avoid it? Well, here's the thing: you can't totally avoid stress. That that wouldn't be realistic. But you can find ways in your life, Susan, to really manage the stress and not get all caught up in in these horrific things. You know, we, I, I still watch the news. I don't I don't watch the news right before I go to sleep. That's not a good time to watch the news because you impress your subconscious mind and you take everything you view right before you go to sleep with you uh, when you sleep. But that way. If I'm up on what's happening in the world, I know where to send love and light in my prayers. But all of us need to to look at our own life and find things for which we can be grateful. Focus on simple pleasures. Uh, and we, we'll go through this a little bit more and what that means. But if you can do that, it will help you get through some of the tough times. And if I'm ever feeling out of sorts, I often will look for something on my calendar significant on the horizon. You know, there there are little things that you can do throughout the day just to help you handle the stress. Mm -hmm. You know, Susan, we'll we'll talk about those things in a minute. But, um, you know, I I know that you have a uh, Los Angeles-based consulting firm dedicated to optimal wellness. And um, you call that the... Health Unlimited. Now, just let's ask you this question. Why did you start that? Well, it's a wonderful story. I'll just sort of bottom line it for you here. But when I was a teenager, I was really sick. And my grandmother, who was not a doctor, she was just wise in the ways of living close to the earth and using foods and herbs and natural things and other lifestyle practices to heal the body. So people would come to her from all over the neighborhood, and whether they had an earache or a bug bite or maybe a life-threatening illness, she knew how to take care of people and help them heal. So she helped me heal over a 30-day period. And then for the next seven years, I stayed with her a lot, worked with her. She taught me what she did and how how she did the healing. And really, she didn't do the healing. Our own body is capable of healing itself if you give it the right tools. And as a result of her wisdom in those early days, to this day, I haven't taken any prescription medication. I haven't had a cold or a flu in over 30 years and since the early 80s, I've started my private practice, Health Unlimited, 
where people come to me from around the world or I go to them and I teach people how to be vibrantly healthy, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and spiritually as well. Hmm. Now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty here. So um, I'm sure people know they feel stress, but they don't really understand what is stress and why is reducing stress so important. Yeah, good question. Well, see, people don't know that about two-thirds of all doctor visits are due to stress-related ailments, and it's also believed from the latest studies that 80 to 90% of all diseases are stress-related. And what causes you stress, Susan, might not cause me stress. And, Mm -hmm. you know, for some people it might be like where I live in L.A., it's bumper-to-bumper traffic and constant noise. For some people it's unpaid bills or terrorism or weather-related. It can be caused by emotions like fear, anger, worry, grief, depression, and even guilt. And when you're under constant stress and you don't deal with it, you don't manage it well, it can actually lead to high blood pressure, heart problems, fatigue, muscle and joint pain, headaches, even weight gain, sleep debt, bone loss, inflammation, um, so many so many chronic health conditions are caused by stress. That's why you want to learn to manage stress by doing simple things throughout the day that can make a world of difference. And it does begin with attitude. My grandmother, her name was Fritzi, she was from Denmark, she used to say to me, uh, and my nickname is Sunny, so she would say, Sunny, Attitude is the mind's paintbrush. It can color anything. And we've got to remember that it's not really the people in our lives, the complications or the times in which we live that cause us stress. It's really what we think about the people, the complication, and the times in which we live. And there, and, and, and so in other words, it's about control. And there's this great recent study that where scientists compared two groups of people taking a math test under a barrage of noise. And those who could adjust to the noise level had little change in their immune function, while those who couldn't experienced a drop in immune cell function. So feeling in control has less to do with your situation and more to do with your attitude. So remember, like you said right right up top, Mm -hmm. living a stress-free life is not a reasonable goal, But the real goal is to learn to deal with stress actively and effectively. Mm -hmm. Now, you use alternatives, and probably it sounds like holistic medicine to deal with stress, do you not? That's right, yeah. Because we are a whole being. The body reflects the mind. The mind reflects the spirit. So the body is a great place to start. And one beautiful example is exercise. Exercise is one of the best ways to reduce stress. All the studies show that if you do something like walking, and I know before the show you and I talked about uh, both of us love to do our walks, and if you raise your heart rate during a walk to a little more than 100 beats per minute, that's not even that fast. One single bout of a walk, even, uh, even if it's level ground, can reduce tension in your body by 20%. And tension in the body is how you measure stress. You actually can use a machine called an EMG, an electromyograph machine, where you put these little electrodes on, on top of your skin and it measures the tension in your muscle. That's how you look, that's one big way to look at the stress. And, and one study done at USC showed that a vigorous walk for 15 minutes on the track reduced stress by 20%, and this effect was even greater than the second group of subjects who were given a tranquilizer. So go for a walk, hit the gym, do weight-bearing exercise, even give yoga a try. Studies show that those who practice yoga have lower stress hormones than those who don't. And I always tell people, Susan, to walk your dog every day, whether you have a dog or not. (laughs) Yes. 
Now, Susan, in, in many of the countries around the world, um, their life is pretty difficult. I mean, look at, look at the situation in Africa, in other uh, countries around the world. It's, it's, it's really pretty horrible. Now, they seem to adapt themselves to all the work they have to do and the, the trouble in their societies. For, for some reason, do you think that this country seems to um, embrace, and I, I use that word not in the literal sense, but to embrace the stress, to, to make it more stressful for themselves because of the computer, uh, because life is all about making money and power? I mean, what is wrong with the attitude of the people in this country? Well, I'll tend to agree with you, but it also, I mean, I, I, I talk and see people all over the country and worldwide, and some people, and especially in the big cities like here in L.A. and New York and, and other places, it's always about more, 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 living a better lifestyle, working longer hours, and some people forget what living is all about. It's about learning. It's about loving. It's about connecting with family and friends. It's about living thankfully every day. And it's also about, I think, being a shining example of, of being the best person you can be because our life is really a gift. And what we do with our life is the gift that we give back to our Creator. So some people get in a rut. It's like this um, spin cycle lifestyle, and it's hard to get out. And what often get get out of that rut, and often what it takes, sadly, is someone losing a loved one or, or having a, a, a major illness or a life-threatening illness, to see what really matters in life. Um, some people learn it earlier in life. Some people don't learn this at all. But we can all enhance and enrich our lives by slowing down, appreciating the simple pleasures of life, and and really, from the moment you get up in the morning, making a conscious choice to live a more mindful life and not just live on that automatic pilot. Give us the defini definition of a mindful life. What, is, what does that mean? Well, so often we're living in the past, regretting or wishing we had done something differently. We're worried about the future, and we forget that the only moment we really have, the moment, and it's, it's, it's what living powerfully is all about, is this precious moment right now. And uh, I always tell people that every hour on the hour, uh, un uh, but not when you're sleeping, you don't want to wake up every hour, just take one to three minutes to do some deep breathing and, and look around and, and be mindful of what's around you. So often we drive during the day, and we, maybe we pass a park or we pass some beautiful architecture or beautiful homes, and we're not even aware of it because our mind is so cluttered with thought after thought we don't take time just to simply relax to, to do some deep breathing um, you know wh whether you call it meditation um, just to slow down and it's by breathing deeply and being aware of what's around you that's what living mindfully is all about Mm -hmm. So, okay, let, let's go through some of the, your surefire stress busters and best tips for creating a healthier, more stressful, balanced life. All right. So I'd say top on the list is we just talked about it. It's get moving. Find a way to move your body every day. So m many of us now live sedentary lives behind a desk or just, you know, dealing with business or sitting in the car or on the train or whatever we do and we're not getting enough activity we need about 30 minutes of vigorous activity every day and it needs to be a non-negotiable practice because if you go week after week after month after year of not getting exercise it will catch up with you so you've got to get some exercise in 
And then another stress-relieving stress buster. Um, I guess that was redundant. (laughs) A good stress would be, and I mentioned it, meditate and breathe deeply. Now, don't worry. You don't need to be a Buddhist monk to know how to meditate. You just find a little special quiet place. It can be in your home. It could be at the park down the block. Um, It could literally be in the room of your home where people usually don't bother you, the bathroom. (laughs) But spend 5 to 15, 20 minutes there, if you can, first thing in the morning and before going to bed. If you can't do this twice a day and you only can do it once a day, then pick the morning. Because remember, the first 40 minutes of each day sets the tone for the day. So I'll get up in the morning and I'll wash my face and I'll get some water. And then I sit down in the corner of my bedroom that's devoted to my little meditation center And I close my eyes, and I focus on my breathing, and I inhale and exhale slowly and deeply. And and after a few minutes, you know, I I feel relaxed and peaceful. I usually end with a little visualization of how my day is going to go. I see it peaceful and calm. But this way you start and possibly also end your day on a stress-free note. And by the way, on my website, I've got in my current newsletter, I've got lots of information about meditation and stress and weight loss and energy. It's all free. You can find it on my website. You know, speaking of that, Susan, you've actually written many books and over 25 to be precise. And some of the books that that you've written are also about health and wellness as it relates to diet. Now, um, eat a stress-relieving diet is one of your tips for a balanced mm-hmm. life. Tell tell our audience a little bit about that book. Yes. Yeah. Well, yes, yes. I've got I've actually got a new book that will be out next week. You'll see it on my website next week called The Curative Kitchen. And it's all about the foods and all these lifestyle choices that will make you healthy and live a more balanced life. You see, Many of us make the wrong choices every day by consuming foods that were never intended for our miraculous bodies. And so many people are digging their graves with their knives and forks day in, day out. And as my grandmother used to say, that you want to look to nature for what to eat. Because in nature, Susan, you don't find ice cream trees and donut vines and potato chip bushes. But here's a good way to think of nutritious food. Produce is the most important health care your money can buy. And if you add in lots of fresh and organic if possible, fresh vegetables and fruits every day, not only will that make you healthier, but it will help it will help get rid of some of the negative effects of other foods you might eat. And remember that the foods you eat can also be potent medicines that actually heal the body, and restore vibrant health. So in my new book, The Curative Kitchen, I go through a list of my 21 favorite superfoods in addition to um, all the different herbs and spices and how ones that you might use in your cooking every day. Let's say cinnamon. Cinnamon's anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, and helps balance out your blood sugar level. So you'll find all of this in my new book, The Curative Kitchen. Mm-hmm. But Susan, you know, how do we um how do we defeat uh these large companies like McDonald's, Burger King, various other fast food restaurants? You know, they have tremendous amounts of money to do a lot of advertising and our kids are you know, uh, many of the families in in the world now um push their their children to go to places like I just mentioned. Now, what do you say about that? Oh, don't get me started on this. Uh, well, you know, obesity is becoming more and more epidemic all the time, and most of the foods in these fast food restaurants um, add to disease, cause obesity, and and they're very addicting, and I know that. I don't know it personally, but I know people come to me, and you you just have to educate yourself about the importance of eating healthy foods. And we become creatures of habit. You start eating a food, and it's hard to give it up. That that happens with sweets and desserts and lots of dairy products. 
And you've got, I tell people, it takes 21 days to make or break a habit. And if you're addicted to going to a McDonald's or another fast food restaurant, just say for 21 days, I'm going to skip it. If you miss a day and you go to the restaurant, then you've got to start back over. But no one's saying you've got to do it a year or six months. And after 21 days, it's it's you re-educate your taste buds, and, and you actually will lose the craving. Hmm. And you can do that with adding in a habit, like for 21 days I'll eat a salad or drink more water or exercise. And in 21 days, you've established a new habit, and it's very effective. Mm-hmm. Now, you talk about um, natural supplements, and I... You know, I always wonder whether these natural supplements can really make a change in your body. Um, there are many people I know who take so many. Now, is, tell our audience about what you call natural supplements and how important they are for the body. Well, I think maybe 50 years ago when we didn't live under so much stress and many of us had gardens in our backyards, Perhaps we didn't need supplements, but this day in which we live with tremendous stress and getting foods that have been shipped from across the country, and and then we lose lots of nutritional value when they're cooked to death. All heating and cooking destroys nutritional value. Just as nutritional insurance, we need to supplement our diets. It doesn't need mean you need to take 50 to 100 supplements a day. But there are just a few that you don't want to be without. And, um, you know, the supplements I've taken for ages um, are all created by michaelshealth.com. You can go to Michael Schwartz. That's his website, Michael's Health. There's some of the best-selling whole food supplements. They're formulas um, in the health food stores, or you can get them at michaelshealth.com. But he has wonderful, wonderful formulas. He was the first guy decades ago that made um, gender-related supplements, like something for a woman or a man or a child. So just as nutritional insurance, you do need to take, say, a multi. um, You've got to have your vitamin D level checked in your next blood test at the doctor's office, but... Most people need vitamin D, even though I'm out in the sun a lot. In L.A., I got mine checked a year ago, and it was way below normal. So I take extra D um, and and a few other supplements like that. Hmm. Now, um, I don't want to stay on this topic that long, but I just know that people have told me when you take vitamin C, for example, it really, you you get rid of it um, when you, of course, go to the, you name it. Yeah, you see it more yellow when you you pee. Mm -hmm. And that's because a lot of people take too much at once or don't take a time-released vitamin C. You want, I take one that's a time-released and I actually take five grams a day because I perspire a lot with my workouts, with my infrared sauna, uh, and uh, you know everything else I do. And I know how healing it is, and I know how it helps to build the collagen in your body. And I want my skin to keep looking youthful. It helps boost your immune system. So if you don't have a time-released vitamin C, then then take it two or three times during the day in smaller amounts than all at once. Mm -hmm. And then take it with a meal as well. Now, I'm going to go through some of the things that you, of course, say are the surefire stress boosters. So let's talk about sleep. Oh, boy, Susan. I mean, that's right there at the very top of the list because lack of sleep, which most people get lack of sleep, undermines the body's ability to deal with stress. And when you get too little sleep on a regular basis, and I mean less than seven to eight solid hours a night, it makes you hungry, and especially for calorie-dense foods that are not good for you, and primes your body to hold on to all the calories you eat, which means it makes it really easy to gain weight. And too little sleep makes you irritable, shortens your lifespan, makes you more stressful, increases depression, makes it difficult to multitask, And you've got to make that non-negotiable every night if you want to keep your weight down 
and be healthy in your life. And you know how much more positive you feel in the morning mm-hmm. after a good night's sleep. Yeah, but Susan, let's be realistic. When when people get older, very often they just can't sleep that long. It's not something that they don't want to do, but it's something that just the body just doesn't allow them to do. Yes, and and, and then there are wonderful, wonderful, Susan, supplements you can take that have natural herbs and vitamins in it. That because on occasion, and especially when I travel, I'm in a unfamiliar place in a hotel room with loud people next door to me. I always take something called Sleep Factors. It's made by Michael's Health, and it helps you to gently. And I and by the way, on my website susansmithjones.com, if you go to favorite products. And the very first category is all about Michael's health. And so he's got a formula called Sleep Factors, and it helps you to gently ease into sleep. It helps you stay asleep, because I'm older. And if you get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, it will help you go right back to sleep again. So, And it's got herbs and vitamins and minerals in it. Uh, So we have things that are natural, and it's not habit-forming, to help you go to sleep and stay asleep. Mm. Now, the other thing that you talk about is something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and that's about hydration. Um, I've been told that it's some people even told me that I should drink 10 glasses of water. Now, what's your formula for that? Yes. Uh, Well, it's interesting because my blog today on my website is all about water. And and keep this in mind, 70% of our body is water. Our cells, we have over 70 trillion cells, but our cells are 70% water, and so is our planet Earth. I don't think that's a coincidence. And each day we need to drink at least eight glasses of purified water. But if you live in a hot environment, if you perspire a lot or you're in a dry climate um, like Arizona or in an airplane, you've actually got to drink a little bit more water. And uh, keep keep in mind that not all liquids will do. Coffee, caffeinated tea, colas, and alcoholic beverages actually dehydrate your body. So if you drink coffee all day and caffeinated tea and alcohol at night, you've got to drink more water. Ideally, your body needs half of your body weight in ounces of water. Now, some liquids can count towards that tally. If you have a like a soup, a liquid soup, or if you have uh, if you have fresh juice, fruit or vegetable juice, that will count towards the tally. But remember that if you want your skin to look young, lack of moisture in our faces cause wrinkles the way lack of moisture in a plum causes a prune. And why do we need to drink all this? All this water maintains proper fluid balance because a little bit of dehydration, just a little bit, lowers your metabolism, makes your brain a little foggy, makes you forgetful, makes it more difficult to sleep. So we need water to, for fluid balance, for our brain, our kidneys, to rid the body of waste and toxins to maintain radiant health. And also water is the best, cheap, safe, and effective appetite suppressant because if you have a big glass of water about 20 minutes before a meal or snack, you won't be that hungry. And oftentimes, Susan, when we think we're hungry, we're actually thirsty. So get in the habit of carrying water with you wherever you go and stop drinking water 90 minutes before bedtime because you don't want to be up all night using the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to finish on something that I think is very sweet. Um, You say that it's important to laugh a lot, and I agree with you. How can I not? So tell our audience again what it means when you have that humor and you laugh a lot. Yeah, well, when you laugh, your body actually releases, and you've heard of this, endorphins. That, you know, you release endorphins when you do aerobic exercise, too. And these endorphins act as one of the best stress busters. And also when you laugh, you give your heart muscle a good workout. It improves circulation. It helps tighten your abdominal muscles. 
It clears respiratory passages, and it also helps to relieve pain and counteracts fear, anger, and depression, all of which are linked to illness and stress. So it's always good to hang around people that make you laugh or go to a movie or watch a TV show or read a book that tickles your funny bone because, you know, laughter is like the elixir of the soul. And and in this day and age in which we live with so many horrific things going on, we've got to fill our lives with as much laughter as possible. And I'll also add with gratitude. We need to cultivate that attitude of gratitude. Gratitude is is also a great stress buster. And what you think about consistently brings more of the same into your life. So focusing on the positive, even during difficult times, and I know sometimes that's hard, but we've got to do it, is one of the best ways to reduce and alleviate stress and transform your life. And as my grandmother always used to say to me, that the path to peace and balance is this. Each and every day, live thankfully. That's a great way to finish the show. I want to thank my guest, Susan Smith-Jones, for being on the Susan Brender Show. It's really been an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Susan Brender Show. To be a guest, email sebrender at yahoo.com.